Hey everybody, this is Craig at VTEX again, and today we're answering some of your questions. So today we're gonna shine a light on some pond questions. We have a question from Matt, who works for a broadband services company. What do the terms BPON, EPON, and GPON mean? Can you talk us through these acronyms? Thank you so much for that question. Yeah, it was definitely an awesome one, and I totally agree with you. There are a lot of acronyms in pond setups, but we're here to help you out with this pond alphabet soup. So when you work with us, no problem. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy, as I like to say. So let's just go through our alphabet and give you a better understanding. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these pond components, mostly based on the different type of standard bodies, right? So there's two main standard bodies when it comes to pond. There's the ITU and the IEEE. So just to get a little brief history about it, of course, when we started, we had much slower bandwidths, you know, down to 155 meg. And you can see as time goes on, we get larger bandwidths and we're up now to the 10 gig. So let's see how this kind of developed. So when we first start, we were at a pawn, which is an ATM pawn. So this was the first iteration of pawn and it had 155 meg down and it had 155 meg up. But of course, more applications came out, more fiber to the home there was a need for greater speed. So this quickly developed into our next letter, which is our BPON. And here we increased our down link speed, but our uplink speed remained relatively the same. But this still wasn't enough for users. They still wanted more. So what we started is pushing the boundaries past meg into gig. And then the ITU standard came out with the GPON. So I know you're expecting C, right? A, B, C. This only really makes sense if you know Greek alphabet, right? Alpha, beta, gamma, but that's not really where it comes from. Here, the G refers to gigabit speeds, all right? So you can see we're breaking one uh, gig and we're getting in the standard as high as 2.5 uh, down and 1.25 up. At the same time, the IEEE is getting in the mix here. And they said, okay, well, what kind of speeds can we offer that are around the same rate? And here comes our next letter, which makes total sense in sequential order, is the EPON, right? But here, E stands for Ethernet. And we all know IEEE from a lot of Ethernet standards. So it makes sense that they're focusing on an Ethernet uh, type of frame and protocol. Next, as we develop past one gig, we make it into our 10 gig rates. So the ITU has a couple standards actually that comes out over a period of time around this. The first one is our X gig, right? So what does that mean? You just throw an X in front of it, makes everything clear. So this is actually saying, well, we have letters, let's throw some numbers in, but this is a Roman numeral X. So this means 10 gig, right? So this is the first time we're breaking 10 gig on the downlink, but we were not in a symmetrical 10 gig up, 10 gig down. So after that came our XGS pond, which balanced out our rates in the uplink and the downlink. After that, we said, okay, well, let's leave the numbering and go back to lettering. So we threw our NG pond two, but this is our next generation, right? Everything comes out big, it's always next gen. So that's when we move into our NG, all right? Here, the, um, Ob objective was to add this capability of bi-directional, right? Using different wavelengths so that you can use a G pond, an XG pond. You can use all this stuff in your network in the same way. So what was going on with the good old IEEE in this situation? Well, they liked numbers, so they stayed with that and they just added a 10, right? So now they're also at 10 gig. So, but how did these two 10 gig kind of stack up? So let's jump over here and see how everything shakes out. We're gonna do a quick 10 gig comparison. So I've selected the XGS pawn and the 10 gig pawn. I know some of you are thinking this isn't probably the best comparison to make because they didn't come out at the same time. So leave me a comment and let me know if I should really be comparing them to something else that's more along the time of when the standards came out. But just because these have like a really good overlap of the different uh, features uh, to them and how they operate, we can see their downlink uplink is the same. They operate in the same wavelength. 
you know, we see some differences such as modulation, the NRZ, or an Ethernet modulation on the other side. And then the next two major differences, look at how much can be this, can the splitting go on. So the ITU standard allows up to 256, while IEEE is at 64. And another area is the maximum reach. We see 40 kilometers, it's twice as much as the size. So both of these will require FEC. And I know some of you are like, oh great, that's another acronym. You know, if you have a question about that, go ahead, send it out. We can answer it as well. But all of these components in the network, a lot of these transceivers, we can totally support you from VTEX. We have all of these in our product line. So check out our website or give us a call here at our New Jersey location. We'll be happy to explain more of what this whole alphabet soup is or set you up with the right transceiver in your pond network. Uh, so we see that a lot of these are 10 gig, but what happens after that? Do we just stop there? Do we go further? We'll talk about this more in another episode, but right now I'm just giving you like a sneak peek. So everybody's heard of this WDM, and if you haven't, let me know. So here we bring in this concept of, oh, we're using different wavelengths in light. So what do you think is going to happen when we're adding all of these different wavelengths in here, or maybe not one? into this system. Can we add one, two? Can we bring up to eight? Where's the limit of how many can we add? Let me know what you think, if you think this is gonna be useful and how it's gonna play out in the standards, or if you already know that, it would be awesome just for you to put it in there because some of you know the answer to this question already. So keep those questions coming, and remember, if your question gets selected for one of our videos, I'm gonna send you a cup of coffee to enjoy. So until next time, we'll see you then.